Kids are always asking me why I wear this shirt with tiny planes on it. The answer's simple. It's because I'm so fly. <laughs> Welcome to the latest video in my gamification series, uh, and today we are going to talk scratch tickets. Oops, I dropped one. And scratchy diamonds. Um, so, I got to kind of give you the story about how I came up with this idea. Um, I'm starting to see these pop up more and more on Twitter um, and all kind of the gamification hashtags. And I got to tell you, this is pretty cool to see because this was an idea that I had in response to a kid's question uh, about two and a half years ago and figured out a way um, to answer his question with chance uh, and using some core drivers and it's been really cool to see that other teachers have taken hold of this idea and and modified it and come up with their own different versions and uses of it and again that's what I love about this gamification community is that you throw one little pebble into the water and you just watch the ripple effects of everybody who's much smarter than myself and, you know, um, who starts to take it in a bunch of different ways. So that's really cool. So why in the world do I have scratch ticket loot bags uh, in my game? So it all started when I was in a guild battle, battle, and I'm sitting right beside my guild, my uh, battle board, actually. And um, what they did was they defeated a monster and... I was like, congratulations, you win, and let's keep going. And they were like, mm-mm, uh, what happens here? Does the monster drop any loot? Because in games, you know, the monsters drop stuff. But I paused and I went, I, I don't have anything to give you, um, but I'll come up with something. So I went home, uh, and my, my brain just started going nuts with this. And I figured, well, how am I supposed to figure out loot without creating an, un, like an unbelievable amount of scenarios for every single individual character they can encounter? So I did some research. And I started thinking about different ideas uh, of chance. So I started thinking about the core driver um, of unpredictability and curiosity, which I believe is uh, core driver number seven, if I remember correctly. And in that core driver, it's about the unknown of what could be kind of that Schrodinger's cat in the box. You never know what it is till you open it. So I started with the idea of cards, but I'm like, well, then, then I'm just really giving them game cards back, and that's not very fun. It's just like, oh, you find this, you know, so I would maybe... I would essentially use, like, initially I was like, maybe I'll just give them what random um, and without any planning, but that was kind of boring and lame. Uh, so um, I was going through and we had recently got kind of a, a wedding invite from somebody at the time that was like a scratch off, save the date. And I, my mind was like, that's it, a scratch off ticket. So my original like phase one was I tried to learn how to make my own scratch off paint, which was uh, a disaster, but sort of worked. Um, I'll put a link in the description below um, to if you if you're more crafty than I am. Um, I just couldn't get the ratios right, but essentially there's a way using dish soap and stuff and and glue I think and silver paint um, to make some sort of scratchable paint. But it didn't work for me, so um, I did a quick search online and I found a website called myscratchoffs.com, which by this is not affiliated or marketing or anything. I just like how quick and easy their website was. Uh, and I got a whole pile of the scratch tickets. Um, so what I did was, and I'll put a link to my template. I'm going to make this free. I don't know why the heck I wanted to charge a couple of dollars for a template. That's stupid. So it's going to be free now. I'll put the link down below. Um, and I created these loot bags. And my goal was, can I take this loot bag and can I make it awesome, essentially? So what I did was, and you can see here, is to make these things, I made a card template base and then underneath where the sticker is I wrote what the prize was and I just made a whole pile of them I went from you find nothing to a few pieces of gold to rare items mythic rare items rare, you know whatever the case may be and I just made a whole pile of them and then to really put the driver of unpredictability and curiosity home uh, what I did was I then took the sticker and I covered it and I printed over top of it uh, you can kind of see here I printed over top with the actual uh, sticker on. Um, through handling this a lot, I've kind of rubbed off a little bit of the, of the um, ink, but what you can see is these will print right over top from the paper. So then I cut them all up and I literally shuffled them. And now they were 100% random because they all look identical and I had no idea what the prizes were. 
So I started giving these to kids after they killed monsters. And I said, oh, does he drop loot? And they would scratch it. And they were just going absolutely nuts for this stuff. Um, because they just love the idea of scratching and the thrill of like, what could it be and what is it and all those different kinds of ideas. So um, it was it was a success. So I started making bigger things. So using multiple scratch off papers, um, I created larger surface area things. So I made treasure chests. So this whole surface is scratchable. And there's only nine of these in my whole game. So they're kind of like rare treasure chests you can uncover and you scratch all the area off. And instead of like this loot bag, which might contain just one, maybe two at the absolute most small prizes, this was big. This was like you find multiple things. On average, I believe there's four or five different prizes written here. Um, and then again, you just put your stickers on and print over top. So I'm going to demo how I make them on the cheap because the so the first rendition was the paint. Second rendition was this. Um, but then you had to order these stickers. I'm in Canada, so it took a while. To, I couldn't find a good Canadian distributor. You might know, and if you do know, please comment below. It would be awesome. Um, but I couldn't find anything kind of solid. So I had a teacher by the name of Jordan Laughlin. And again, you have to check this guy out on Twitter. He is a gamification nut. Um, he has just grabbed this hook, line, and sinker. I met him about a year ago, uh, literally about a year ago in a few days. Um, and he just went full bore, like the coolest dude and he wanted to make his own scratch offs and he uh, didn't want to order this stuff. So he trialed an idea that I'm going to demo in just a second, which works which so by using um, your strip whiteout. If you put it over top of your words, let it dry, fray out the edges if there's any kind of overhang and then print right over top, it will scratch off. It's a little bit more difficult to scratch off than kind of like a, a really actually printed and designed scratch off uh, sticker. But it works nonetheless um, for a total on the cheap because you can go to the dollar store, grab a pack of one or two of those uh, strip whiteouts for you know a dollar and you can make a whole pile of these cards. So um, I want to go show you now how I make them. Uh, super quick, super easy. You can do them in, in 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, I want to show you how I make them. Um, it takes just a few minutes in which to make them. Um, and then some different examples of how I use them in class. Uh, and I would absolutely love to hear how you do them because it is, it is so awesome the way that you can kind of just pick this core driver of unpredictability and curiosity and kids just go nuts for it. So again, I've got, um, and I'll show you the reasons why, but I've got, I found scratch off ones that look like little diamonds. Um, I had, a, I came up with an idea for that. I've got my situational scratchers, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I've got my treasure chest, which I just showed you. I've got my loot bags and those are kind of my base four. And then you can, again, I'm going to show you a bunch of ideas about how to use them, but they're super easy to make. Um, you can make them um, with the professional paper. It often just comes in strips like this with these, these scratch off stickers and they come in a bunch of different shapes, sizes, colors, um, reflective surfaces, holographic stuff, whatever the case may be. And again, I like to use that my scratch off website. It's just something that I like. Um, or again, you can make the paint if you're crafty, or you can go ahead and you can make them yourself with kind of the strip whiteout. So let me take you through the process of creating them, which again is super easy. Some examples, and I shall be right back. All right, so let's see if these headphones work. First thing you want to do is go into whatever word processing software that you use, um, and you are going to create a template. So to, to essentially create my loot template here, what I did was I just used the shape tool and I made some boxes, uh, made some circles. These are kind of roughly the size of the scratch tickets I have. Please excuse the squeaky ball. Uh, my dog is squeaking a ball and wants me to play. And, you know, it's only 10, 15 at night. Um, then I just dropped a text box and I had searched this area. So this was kind of my template. So then what I did was, and here's a bunch of examples, just dropped another text box in there and I put all of my potential prizes. So again, you can see I use gold, um, variety of gold. I say, you know, sword and shield, spear and shield. Then you can kind of get creative if you want, and you can say like a red potion, and they have to understand that that means health potion in my game or whatever it would be. You know, a crude homemade bomb is the bombs away card, so you can use the variety of different things that you want. Um, so again, here's all of the different ones that I created. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to print these. All right, so just open up your bypass tray, grab your cardstock. Again, you could use paper, as I mentioned, but I'd wholly recommend cardstock for the thickness. And let's get this thing going. So 
So now, on your cardstock, what you're going to find is your words. So now we have to prep it for the scratch tickets. So the first thing you have to do is you got to take clear plastic tape and you got to lay it over each one of the words. Uh, this is because when you scratch, you don't actually want to damage the ink um, when it comes off of the printer. So this is kind of a little tip that I realize seems to work pretty well for this. Uh, so I'm going to cover that in some tape right now. All right, just cutting back here. If you are not using a whiteout strip pen um, and you're using actual scratch off stickers, it's literally at this point where you just take uh, the sticker off. You're going to notice it has a black underside. That's why I use the tape. And then you just stick it directly onto uh, the words that you want to cover. And then um, you proceed as, as I recommend next. So whether you're using the strip whiteout or the stickers, it's the same exact procedure. So this is where I choose to get my scratch offs um, from myscratchoffs.com. Um, they're really reliable, quick, um, and they're going to come in a variety of different things. So if you're interested in doing these, I highly recommend getting the diamonds, the scratch clean off, uh, and kids love them. You can do a bunch of different things I'll talk about later. Um, and then they just have an infinite amount of, of designs and styles and shapes that you can use. And the cool part is I'd recommend going with neutral colors like this golden color or this gray because you are able to print right on them okay and that is the crucial part is that you can print directly on these things and i tried with i bought a what they call a grab bag to see the different kinds and you know i got things that were like blue and these didn't really print unless i wanted a blue picture so it just forced me to be strategic um, but now i want to show you how you can make these things okay because it's actually super easy and kids love them all right, so it's a bit hard to see, but if I kind of go a little bit like this, you can see that I've got a little sheen on there. And that is my plastic tape. So the next thing you gotta do is this is the game changer. This uh, idea was from Jordan Laughlin, who is up in Grand Peace, uh, just around the Grand Prairie area of um, out and up in Northern Alberta here. And this is beyond genius. This is the solution if you don't wanna order scratch tickets uh, paper from like myscratchoffs.com or any other alternative site is he figured out that you can use these Bix Whiteout because they scratch right off. So I am gonna now cover every part of this tape uh, with this Bix Whiteout strip and go slow because what's gonna happen is if you go too quick, it will twist. You can see this one's a bit damaged. All right, so I was trying to show you this, that this one here had a twist at the end, but it's so clear I can't get the zoom in correctly. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start laying out the strips of the strip Whiteout over top of the tape area. And what it's going to do is you just, again, take it nice and slow so it doesn't curl. So now with the strip white out all over the words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that sucker right back into my bypass tray. And I'm going to print right over top of it with the second graphic sheet I told you. So let's check now it out. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to make an exact copy of this. And then you're going to place the bag or the treasure or the barrel or whatever it is you want them to scratch off directly over top. And then you're going to delete everything. So this means that this is perfectly lined up with this one and then the second one with the second one and so on and so forth. So the trick is you're going to print this one first. Then when you have the physical copy, here's the mistake everybody makes, including me all the time. Do not cut anything. Okay, don't cut anything. With the stickers on, you're going to put it back into the bypass tray of your copy or a printer and you're gonna print just this page. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna take the page and it's gonna print right over top of the scratch surface that you add. Whether it's this homemade paint, the stickers, or the whiteout strip, it all works. Just adjust the paper thickness so that it doesn't grind it right off as it prints. So when you go into bypass printing for your printers, you can often set the thickness of the paper. I always put it to thick two or thick three. And then whatever your photocopy or however they work, you can go ahead and adjust this manually. And there you have your own scratch offs. There's always gonna be one uh, or two if the strip is not 100% stuck, like you're gonna see here, that might come off. And these are much more fragile than your traditional ones with actual scratch off paper. But I'll show you these work actually shockingly well. So just doing this really quickly, you can see 
that for the most part that strip white it will come right off um, <clears throat> it's not 100% clear because I didn't wait long enough for it to dry and I wasn't exactly super accurate when I put it on. You can see as a cheap alternative for scratch tickets, it will work 100%. The camera's not doing it too much justice here. You can, you can read this fairly well. You can see my fingers blurry here. Uh, but for the most part, you can read this uh, fairly well if the kids were to finish off scratching it. So that is a cheap and easy solution. Now the question is, how do you use these things? So let me give you a bunch of ideas. So much scratchies. So one of my uses is I have this diamond mind, my Dragon Forge diamond mind, and when my sub gives out their soul stones, oof, they have their pockets, the soul stones go in, and then our dragon friend here lets you mine. So one of the examples is, I have the diamond ones I showed you earlier, and underneath is a value. This is either a real diamond or a cubic zirconia, and you either get 10% of the value if it's a fake diamond, or 100% of the value if it's real, and you just gotta scratch it off, and because I'm a devil, in, uh, I buried them in the sand so they got to dig around with a little tool because whatever and uh, it's written in size 1 font so we have to use microscopes in grade 8 so they have to learn how to use a microscope to read it because sometimes their eyes are incapable like if you're as old as I am. Another thing is for Battleboard or Choose Your Own Adventure if your character you know is running along here and he comes across a barrel I might make it you saw me making these in the video Make it so that they, if they have the proper tool, they can smash open the barrel and then to find the contents of the barrel, they would erase or scratch off the ticket. So that's another use for them. I've got my wheel of chance here. And what I'm going to do is this year I decided to have envelopes. So you spin and then whatever number you get on the wheel corresponds to an envelope. Beep. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to make a giant grid of scratch tickets and then whatever number you spin and land on so let's say you know you spin blah 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 you land on number 31 you would go to the big grid here and you'd scratch off number 31 instead of opening the envelopes which again was another uh, really popular thing I've been talking about it with kids and they really want me to do it this year but no another idea I don't have an example with me at the moment but is you can take one of your cards and instead of naming it, so this is a deflection card in my game, um, what you can do is you can actually take this and you can call it mystery card and you can create a scratch surface here so the kids can find a mysterious item and then scratch off the content to determine what it is as well. All right, so another way to use these actually, and this was through uh, my student teacher, uh, Pendleton Cox last year, um, and he had this really cool idea. Um, we didn't name them, I'm going to call them situational scratchers. So he essentially took uh, grass, like an image of grass, whatever fits your terrain, you can use sand, woods, whatever. Um, and he created a scenario underneath, so you can kind of see that dark box there. And then he just plopped a sticker right over top of it. We didn't print over top of the sticker, um, like I showed earlier. Uh, you can leave it if you want, um, or you could print right over it, some more of the grass pattern. We left it like this. And underneath here is uh, situations that the kids can encounter. And it could be good, bad, ugly, you know, reward, prize, punishment, whatever you want it to be. But he kind of equated it to in kind of like Pokemon or RPGs where you walk through a terrain and all of a sudden you get into an encounter and the screen flashes and, uh, you know, you get into a battle or something like that. Um, so every so often, uh, if kids are kind of, you know, crushing it on questing and everyone's kind of doing what they need to do, um, we'll walk around and we'll just kind of drop these on guilds and say, you know, oh, you see something in the grass, do you want to check it out? Or there's something up in a tree, you know, you could, again, make it a tree or something. And uh, you go ahead and you just scratch off, and then once you scratch it off, you get whatever the scenario is. And you have to act on it immediately, that's the rule. So when you issue them, uh, just make sure that you have uh, time in which to complete them. Um, and again, some examples that he used is he's like, oh, you find 20 gold in a bush, or... You know, you find a piece of meat uh, that you keep in your inventory or something like simple like that, which is quick and easy and doesn't take any planning. Or he had, you know, situations like uh, a wolf is tracking you and you can hear it behind you. If you have a piece of food, drop it to distract it because uh, you won't be able to outrun it. Um, and then you get into a battle with this animal. Um, you know, he talks about, you know, maybe meeting a merchant. Um, any kind of, of idea. But what's cool about it is the kids have to make a decision. Um, within whatever time frame, we always said 10 seconds. Do you want to search, you know, adventure into whatever the scenario was based on the on the the, the picture? In our case, again, it was grass. So was, do you want to search the grass? Um, and then from there, they just went forward and then they scratched and then they had to live with the decision that they made. So there was no kind of like half 
Uh, as kids these days say, it was uh, full send or no send, which is actually is some weird kid lingo for do it or don't. Um, so again, that was a lot of fun. Um, coupled with the other ways, this is just another way that you can use kind of scratch tickets. All right. <clears throat> so there you have it. Um, that is how I use them and how I make them. And again, it is super quick. It is super easy. Um, there's, there's really nothing to it. Uh, anyone can make them really quickly and they have so many uses. And I'd love to see how other teachers are using them. Again, it can be for loot. It can be for prizes. It can be for mysterious situations. It can be, um, like, a think of like a, a bingo kino board, like I mentioned, where you spin and you scratch off certain areas. It can be used for lotteries. It can be used, um, I use them for making my subs have superpowers, which I'll, I'll throw the link below with these, uh, with these diamonds I had mentioned earlier and the, the scratch off diamond mind. Um, it's a really quick and easy thing that you can chuck into your classroom, take kind of, you know, an hour to design, print and make your templates. And then you're, you're off to the races and kids absolutely love them. So I would love to hear what you have to think. Um, what you have to think. I would love to hear what you think. That makes more sense. Uh, and I would love to see the different uses and ideas that you can come up with. Because again, this is just probably the tip of the iceberg because a lot of, of the stuff that I check out there seems to just, people do way cooler things than I do. I gotta, I gotta admit. So I really would love to see what people have to come up with. So um, thank you for checking this out. And believe it or not, this is video number 51 for me, which is like, I started this channel, what, two years ago? And I'm really happy with how it's continuing to grow. So thank you to everybody. Um, and I'm looking for my thousandth subscriber at the time of filming this. I'm at 999. What the heck? So let's get to that 1,000, please. And thank you. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all those fun things. And again, I would love to see what you do with your own scratch-off tickets in your own classrooms. Until next time.